This is Daz, aka Undercover Agent, aka MTS, uh, Juice Records Man, uh, started with Splash, 94. Yeah, like the roots and everything comes to my father. My dad, is, uh, he produced a tune back in 1968. It was called Skinhead Moonstomp by a, a, a band called Suramip, and it charted. And from there, I've always been around instruments. I've always been around music. I've always been like a b-boy since the days of like 1982 when the American hip hop culture came over. Um, yeah, I jumped on it from day dot. I was break dancing, beatboxing, rapping, DJing, spraying graffiti, full b-boy. And uh, basically, we come down to this place. It was out of the way. Didn't want to get nicked by old Bill or nothing like that. And usually when we was painting, we used to paint at night. So down here, you can paint in the daytime, see your colors better, and make it much sharper, you know, like, you know. And uh, yeah, it was just like out of the way. We've actually had old Bill come down there. We've had police come down there while we're spraying. They've said nothing. They've actually asked us, oh, let me, how'd you get them lines? Like, how'd you do that can, you know, can, can control? Because like, you can't just spray like that. To get these kind of lines, it's a certain like angle you have to get and a certain sort of like um, pressure you have to get with the spray can. And that takes years to get like that. So um, yeah, the, the policemen, were just generally intrigued about like, what we was doing down there, but, but no one classed it as like criminal damage because there was no swear words and it's all beautiful colours. So yeah, I started here. My, my graffiti life started here. And Darren Hickey also is a graffiti artist, sort of the person I started with. So that's why we linked, like in the Graphic Design College. We used to do graffiti together and then started doing music together. He had a, a house label and he was a, releasing records. Always, always wanted to release records. And uh, he started me off with a splash. Before the record labels, I was running a radio station called Syndicate FM. Um, that was on 100.4. Um, a lot of the splash producers come from Syndicate. I poached them from Syndicate because I could see that they're talent. People like MB, Magistrate, MAWT, Ego Tripping. So the thing about uh, Syndicate, is we had the biggest signal at one time in the whole of Essex. And the reason why I had the biggest signal is uh, because of that. Um, a person called DJ Callus used to climb up there and put our error up there. He used to plug into the 240 mains on the light because all these high pylons have lights. So he used to plug the transmitter into that light and uh, take him about, I don't know, about 45 minutes to get up there. We had been taken off there. Um, the DTI and Ofcom took us up there. And when they took us off, they sent um, engineers in frog suits to climb up there, because obviously there's a lot of electric up there, so they wear rubber suits. And uh, Callus, DJ Callus from Syndicate, used to go up there in uh, tracksuit bottoms and Reebok trainers. Uh, Juice come about because um, when I was running Splash, I'm, I produced a tune called Babylon and Babylon was going to come out on Splash. DJ Recordings heard it and got involved with the project. When Darren realised that I had a big tune out, he decided, should we start a Juice label together? And he'll do like the artwork and distribution and all the management side of it with his brother Jeff, and I will do the A&R side of it and producing. So we started with our first release, Oh Gosh, we come off the back of Babylon. Babylon, Oh Gosh were made around the same time. So Babylon come out on DJ recordings, Oh Gosh come out on uh, Juice. Well, for me, Sub Bass was the foundation. Um, Darren Hickey learned all his um, record distribution from Danny and Sub Bass. Um, basically, from that point, when I got published by Sub Bass, Danny's had my back all the way through the drum and bass scene, from the beginning and to right up to now. Uh, I can't thank him enough because without him, it wouldn't have been possible. Having a big tune like Babylon and Oh Gosh was uh, amazing for me, but you know, during the time I was in the studio, I wasn't actually experiencing going out to the clubs and hearing it getting rewound. People were telling me, but I was in the studio knuckling down, making the next one, do you know what I mean? So, um, but the place I have to say was AWOL. AWOL on a Thursday night, uh, DJ Randall, uh, I was up there with my friends, played Babylon, it got rewound, the whole place went, chaotic, that's the only thing I can explain. People were slapping the speakers, mushing, 
It was just like, wow. I didn't believe that my tune would do that. And yeah, it was, a, it was amazing, an amazing feeling. Where the tune's so timeless, it's like, and it's not being big headed. But when I made Babylon, I knew it would be like that. I knew it would be like that because when I made Babylon, everything was in place. I didn't have to work. I didn't have to do anything in the studio. I just putting things in and things were working. Putting something out, putting that in, it was working. It just went like that. It was just done in like a weekend. And so basically the drums and the bass and the keyboards was already in the tune. But on Sunday night, there was a film called Rockers coming on. And my friend Sean from Liverpool, who's a reggae DJ, said to me, you might want to record that. There might be some samples in there. So I went, all right, and I recorded it. And literally, I was watching the film. It got to that bit. I stopped the videotape and went straight to the studio. I didn't need to hear it no more. I heard that, that, loop, that loop or that vocal, that sentence, and uh, I didn't need to hear it no more. That was, that was uh, the icing on the cake, the, the Babylon folk, because it wasn't actually called Babylon. It wasn't called Babylon until I got that vocal. So yeah, it was just called you know, project number three or something. So that was that. that. That went in on the drop, and everyone who heard it since I put that in the drop was just like, you've got, you've got a bullet there, that's the one. I know what that all of you shall witness the day as Bagdad shall fall.